Yes, thank you, Kim. Thank you for the invitation to share with uh, you the situation that we are facing in Mexico. Um, with all the reactivation in around the world, Mexico has been doing a great job. I just want to make you a little bit of the, the situation of the things that we are happening in Mexico since last year. Last year, as all of us, we worked very hard with the protocols and the uh, safety situations and rules and regulations that we have to improve in the events. And we work very hard in Mexico. And um, once we have these protocols, we work uh, in some rehearsals events. That we that uh, that's the way we call and perfect. Uh, called the um, new experience events in Mexico. And we, we put in practice these protocols inviting the organizers and all the suppliers uh, involved in these events. This was a very good idea because we invite the, um, the authorities, the health uh, authority and the government's authorities to see how the events can go on with safety rules. And this helped us in different regions of Mexico to restart the events in a, in a different situation I see with uh, some, um, not in a 100% of the capacity of the events. We start with 50% in some regions, in others in 30%, but it is helped that the organizers feel safe and we can communicate that their events can go on. Um, last year, we start with <clears throat> very few events. Right now, we have a different speed. I don't, I don't know if there, there are the, Consumer to consumer events, the most um, that are the most excited and happy to get to go again, not the B2B, I'm sorry, <clears throat> not the B2B uh, events, but the, the, the ones that are more to the consumer. The people is so happy to go again. We are, as all of all in the world, we are improving the technology to the way to the shows, and we are making hybrid events. As, as in, in some other regions, but the ones that are having face-to-face, -face, you know, the, the people is so excited to go out again. They are, they are very happy to connect again with the people. And then I think there's one element we have to improve and to push with all the suppliers. Use the mask, uh, make, um, make um, well, use the um, alcohol health or whatever of all the protocols you have to, to, to take on. But we move on a, a group that we are calling the COVID squad. This is, uh, this is COVID squad is the people that is always implicating the, that we have to save all the distance. I would, we have to uh, use correct the mask and to um, count the people that is on the hall, especially in the conference room. All the, all the, the all we are, we are working all together and really, believe me, the people is very happy to go on face-to-face uh, -face again in these new reality events. Yes, I can imagine that. I really would like to be there. And my apologies to all the people in the meeting. I forgot. I was so excited to have Celia that I started with the first question. But Celia, this is our uh, industry relations working group. And as you can see, it's a very few uh, audience, but uh, we are. You have people here from all around the world. And the idea is that we are ambassadors of our countries. So I would like that uh, this very good news are shared in in every and on all the world. So people in Italy, in India, in Brazil, Finland can listen about what is happening in Mexico. And maybe at the end of this year or probably next year, their exhibitors can feel free and feel uh, safe and comfortable to travel to Mexico and also Mexicans to travel all around the world. Here we have people from India, from Germany, Finland. France, Italy, Brazil, uh, I don't know, South Africa. I don't know if I forgot some, some other country, but 
and also Mexico. So that is why I am very excited to have you here and to share this news with everybody. So our second question is about, uh, I was listening about that the opening of the exhibitions industry was very restricted because of the government regulations. So what, how was about Mexico and all the negotiations that we were, we were having with them for the last maybe the whole year, no? About when, how, how many people, et cetera. How was that negotiation with the government in Mexico? I think, Kim, I think this situation was the same all over the world. The authorities were very, um, they were facing all this sanitary situation that the only priority was the health of the people. So um, I think the rehearsal events show the authorities that we were ready ready to start and we were ready to communicate the audience how the people can go on and face life again, um, taking care of the people with all these protocols, with all these uh, measures, means, um, <clears throat> taking care all, all of this detail. As I told you, this is quad, uh, this, this team that was uh, taking care of all the people and taking care of all the details that we were, um, facing was was a very key was a key important and uh, to show to these authorities that we were ready so i i want to tell you that, that if this example helped you to show to the authority to take to go on on life and say this this is how we can do it how this this rehearsal event i forgot you to tell i forgot to tell you that this rehearsal was uh, for the organizers and for all the suppliers. This was an event for, for us, for us to, to live how these protocols have to be taken on. And if we were wrong, we can, uh, we can get the right, uh, the right duration and, and correct every protocols that we were writing on. So this was a very, key event to show the authorities how how can, can we go on life. And in this situation, the, the authorities gave up the permission in some of the locations to go on a 50% of the audience on 30% of the audience. Right now in Mexico City, it was the last, uh, it, it, as you know, Mexico City has a very long population. So the authority was very restricted in, in our events. Right now we are on a um, it's a yellow uh, light, mm -hmm. so we can go right now again on on events in a thirty percent. But it was a long walk to take the Mexico City in this situation. Uh, Monterrey, Guadalajara, or Merida in the south of the country right now are are doing these live events with uh, good protocols and with the, well, with the authorization of the sanitary and the local uh, authorities. I have a question from David Palomo. Uh, he's asking how the government will arrange everything for the foreign exhibitors and visitors, and if there uh, will be any COVID special treatment. I don't know if you are able to answer this question. It's uh, right now for the, for the foreign um, visitors and exhibitors, we don't have a special um, treatment, but we are facing very uh, uh, different situation for the Congress, not for the exhibitors. For the Congress, we are working with the, with the COVID test. Uh, we have been um, having, we are having special Congresses. Right now, the, this last, last month, we have our annual Congress for Amprofec, and we work with the COVID test previous to Congress. So this uh, helped us to have an audience uh, with COVID free. Uh, and this helped us just yes, to have a different situation with all this special treatment for, for the visitors and in the, for the attendees of this Congress. Right now, we don't have special treatment for the international um, exhibitors or visitors for different uh, shows. But I think this, this is a special treatment that our authorities have to take care of. Yeah. Right now, we don't have something special. Thank you, Celia. 
I'm really glad that I am receiving some questions. Another question, and then I'm going to move forward with uh, maybe the last one. But Ravinder from India, he's asking us, uh, did the organizer think of going into virtual or hybrid model? Last year, I think all of us, we gone to the, these virtual events and hybrid events. Uh, and Perfect Rock, Rose, the runs and well, we asked the different uh, organizers how, and the exhibitors and visitors, how was the experience of going hybrid or, or virtual? And the, the, this, this test uh, tells us that the, the experience was not so good for the hybrid or virtual events. That's, that's a, that the reality, the, the platform, we run with this, hybrid platforms, but they would have to, to take care about the customer experience we have to deliver to them. So um, I think we are, as organizers, we are learning how to do it, but the hybrid events or the technology, I consider it was, is going to be a um, complement of the live events. That's how we see these, these events. So. They are using the organizer in Mexico. They are using this uh, technology or hybrid models to extend the experience for, with the people that are not coming to the show or to look for other um, good customers or good visitors to attend the show in different way. But we are far, far away to deliver a very good experience to all the audience in this with this technology. I think so. Yeah, definitely hybrid events will help, but yes, a face-to-face -face or live events are really necessary. I have yes, a couple of more questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Claudia Leoni from Italy is asking us, how organizers manage social distance between visitors? Mm. That's a good question. In the protocols, uh, we establish uh, different uh, measures in the aisles for the for the, the exhibition trade shows. Um, we have uh, main aisles, very 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 big, five five uh, meters more or less for for these principal aisles. Uh, and as I told you, the the COVID squad help us to in in the moment we are humans. In the moment we see us. These groups began to to move on, with, but but the squad, the COVID squad, helped us to remember that we have to maintain a social distance in different way. This is happened. Um, I don't know if some of you have been traveling in in the hotels, in the restaurant. They they help us to have this special social distance. So. When we go live in a live show, these special groups help us to remember that we have to maintain these special uh, activities with a social distance to preserve the health. So I think that that's, that's, that's happening in the real events. Yeah, a very tough thing in Mexico because Mexicans are very touchy people and we all yeah. want to hug one each other. So. But very nice. Uh, Jackie Neal from South Africa is asking us how's the communication with exhibitors and visitors. Wow, that's that's a very good point. Um, as organizers and as suppliers, we know all the protocols we have to follow. But in this case, uh, we have to make a very big campaign of communication about these protocols. First of all, to make the people comfortable to go again on live and second to follow the rules that we are going to uh, to encourage and as an example in some case of the exhibitors we make one line uh, the, the we have to walk only in one line or facing one line. so this this these uh, special activities that you have to follow the people have to know have to know how to uh, behave in the space how to, how to in some case when you are looking for a, a conference if you are looking uh, you are going to use handset or uh, you are going to be in a in a in a meeting with with meal with food all these situations have to be very clearly communicate how the community is going to behave in this show. So communicate, communicate, communicate is the next uh, game we have to play. 
<laughs> the most important one. Yes. Yes. And we have another question from Guido Nelly in Italy. What is the financial situation of the venues and organizers and supply chain in Mexico? Have you received any help from the government? I'm gonna cry with your question, Guido. <laughs> This is, a, this is a very rude question. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, unfortunately, the situation of the venues and the organizers is very, uh, I think it's the same of all of the world. We are facing a very rude situation, financial situation, because uh, this year, not having events uh, and postponing the events in Mexico, um, we have a combine of um, private and, and not private venues. The private venues, uh, of course, they have to go on with the support of the, you know, the, 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 um, the people that finance these operations. But in case, in case of the public, the public that are part of the government, they just stop. They just up and they are not receiving uh, any uh, support of the government. So we are facing a very, very good situation in Mexico, but the, uh, uh, the private organizers are doing a very good job. They are, uh, they are going on again, they are pushing to go uh, on live event and this is helping us to restart this, uh, this organization and this, this uh, well, these people on the, and all of us, all of that we are involved in this industry. Yeah, I really feel very proud of this industry because as Mexicans, we are showing that everything is possible and that we are able to make miracles with a very small budget or reduced budget. Yes, yes. I have another question for you. Uh, this was came from Matias. Uh, what is the expectation from the organizers specific for the... Uh, suppliers and especially suppliers like of like freight forwarders and on-site um, contractors? First of all, I think all our suppliers and organizers, I'm, I'm talking about suppliers like you, the venues, and uh, even the ones that make uh, help us to, to stand up this, this place and the organizers, we are working together. We, we also work together to make all these protocols and rules and regulations, safe, safely rules and regulations. So the expectation for the organizers is to help us to communicate in good way to the exhibitors and visitors how we are going to go back on live event. That's, I think this, that, this is the first expectation. You know our clients, you know how uh, their needs, you know uh, even more uh, as we as organizers but even more, I think you know these clients, the needs they have on site. So uh, they, they, they will, the moment you help us to communicate how we are going to behave in this new world is going to be better for all of us. It's going to be a win-win. Uh, I think because um, we have to come in, communicate in um, confidence to our client to go again to events. There's a lot of people that is not happy to go on live again. And it's, I think it's um, because the, the, the things we are living in all of the world, we lost people. We, um, we have family that have this passing of this uh, situation with the COVID. So the people have to take time to be comfortable, to be live again. And we are going to fade this since that's why the, the, the shows are coming on very small in this new reality, because the people have to be feel comfortable. And you as suppliers help us to communicate the rules and regulation and help us because they are going to ask everyone if we are to be we are safe, they are they are giving us their money. So we have to help them take the best, uh, I think the best situation or the best uh, answer to go on, on life again. You are a very important part of this process to go on these shows. 
Thank you very much, Celia. You are very, very right. It's time to share confidence with everybody, with all the world, so our business can reactivate very, very soon. Thank you very much, Celia. It was very nice to talk with you. Thank you very much to share this information with all of us. And I hope that then Italy and Germany and all the world can share the same very good news with the, with the audience and we can start just moving forward with our business, with our passion and see you again face to face with our mask, but it doesn't matter. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much, Celia. <laughs> Thank you to you, Kim. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be shared with you. Hermosa. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Thank Celia. You. Hasta, próxima. Hasta la próxima. Gracias. Thank See you in Mexico or wherever it is. Yes. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.